Hello world, it's Shea Evans, and welcome to episode two of Why is Shea Evans Talking About Ghost Stories? Right now, I'm sitting here in between three haunted houses. The one behind the camera I grew up in, and it was built in 1889. And there's been multiple people that have actually died there, most of my relatives. The porch right here, this is also a house probably born in 1890, so we call it born. <laughs> um, but all the houses in this neighborhood are very old. The first street that's behind me is a brick street, and it was the first built in this small town in southern Ohio. This is one of the places in Ohio that uh, I feel has been forgotten it has more history than you could ever imagine. It actually has the history of the Underground Railroad. And Kentucky, literally, if I look this way, I can see Kentucky. The Ohio River is probably less than two blocks from me right now. When I'm doing stories, true stories, about the dead, you understand that the content, you know, there's going to be a lot of it. So today I was going to maybe go to the cemetery, but my dad and I were discussing that the Bulls brothers were serial killers in this neighborhood back, I'm thinking in the early 80s. Could be wrong. Their house is literally five houses from where I'm sitting right now. And the railroad track, because I'm looking at it right now, the railroad track is probably two blocks. But what they did, it's obvious they had a homicidal impulse. They would go find homeless people on the railroad track they would beat them to death for fun. Nobody really knows how many dead people ended up buried about a block and a half from here from the Bulls brothers. But they were caught because one of their victims actually escaped and this direction ran and knocked on a million houses, or not really a million, but many, and nobody would answer the door, but one family did, and he was able to tell what happened, and they were arrested. You know, just in your hometown, if you actually think about it, you know, how many people do you know were murdered, or how many people have you talked to that their family members were murdered? you start thinking about it, you actually, you know, shock yourself. Um, probably about a mile from here, there's another family that was on America's Most Wanted in the 2000s. I'm not going to say their last name because the daughter knows who I am because she actually dated my son for a while. But she was an eyewitness or suspected eyewitness to her sister's brutal murder for her mother and father with the little girl killed her in a storage bin and buried her in the side yard in this little area called Green Valley. All the houses are these little ranch houses and they're really close together. Well, the little girl didn't have the same father and I guess he kept calling to want to talk to his daughter she apparently wasn't able to get to the phone because she was buried in the backyard. Also, there's a reason why the cemetery has a specific way they bury the dead. So her body was decomposing and the neighbors started to smell it. And that is why they went on the run. So the family went on the run and they, they took their kids 
and they were on America's Most Wanted because Sheriff's Department and I assume you know, town police found the body because the smell it was really big news. And um, someone that I know was actually a police officer at the time, and I remember seeing him on America's Most Wanted talking about it, looking for this family. They were relentlessly looking for this family. I guess they had went to a, a mission or a homeless shelter somewhere, you know, states away, and they were recognized and brought in. I talked to the daughter in the past who, she never actually said what happened, but she did say that she only speaks to her father that's in prison and not her mother. They're both in prison for life. That might say a lot, just right there. You know, people assume that it was the stepdad. She talks to her father. It was the stepdad of the murdered girl. But the actual witness still speaks to her father, but not her mother. You know, why am I interested in, in talking about death and telling stories. I grew up in this neighborhood where you know, these houses are very old. Many people died in them. You know, right behind me, my friend's parents bought a house and they redid it. And, you know, there were bones underneath the house. And, you know, we were you know, little girls who played Barbies, but we also had bone sales with the bones that we found underneath the house. Our parents at the time, you know, I don't think they identified that it was, you know, any human remains, but as little girls, you know, to us, it was. I mean, it could have been. <laughs> I would know now, but I didn't know when I was, you know, five years old having a bone sale. But, you know, if that just gives a little bit of you know, background to me. Plus, I grew up in a haunted house. You know, I grew up in a house where my grandfather died in the kitchen. His second wife died upstairs in the bedroom. It was a very noisy house. So sometimes, you know, you would hear doors slamming and picture frames smashing off the walls, hitting the hardwood floor, and you can hear glass shatter. Now, that's recent. Um, you go downstairs and nothing's there and another reason is because me myself in 2000 I was I guess I'm just gonna say really stupid and I elected for plastic surgery Probably is. What? I didn't. That's not made up. So, you know, we always grew up in this area, and this is just not, you know, suburbia. This is this is a story. His story. History, his story, a lot of history. Our cemetery, mm. you see, I wanted to go there today, but I just had this really strange feeling. And also, um, a few years back, not in this town, but in another city in Indiana, a family member of ours, was actually murdered in the cemetery. So I'm kind of, I go to the cemetery, but it's kind of creepy to be in there because I'm always like, you know, looking over my shoulder, trying to see who's, you know, walking up behind me, just like a minute ago. This isn't really a neighborhood where people just walk by. That's weird. Um, so yeah, so now you're thinking, okay, so this girl's really weird and, you know, she wants to talk about 
dead people and this, that, and the other. But, you know, I'm one of those people that I saw the light in this botched surgery. Um, it was, I'd elected for, I'd elected for the surgery. It was like a mini tummy tuck after a C-section. And um, Dr. Brucker, who is now retired, hit my femoral artery and my femoral nerve. Well, I remember seeing the light and it was like a kaleidoscope and I remember it going whoop, 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 whoop. All right. So I also remember being home and one of my friends came to visit me and she's like, oh my God, you know, you got to understand, you know, we're just like the blonde girls and the, you know, you see how ridiculous I look all the time. So, oh my God, your stomach is so flat. I had this guilt. It was this weird guilt. Um, but yeah, so basically the guilt, I think, was because I elected for something that my body almost died. It would have been my fault. Even if it was the doctor's fault, it's still my fault because of vanity. Now would I do it again? Probably. <laughs> but, you know, it's just being ridiculous. Uh, today's November 1st, 2020. Election day is two days away. I'm getting word that you know, New York's boarded up. Fifth Avenue's a ghost town. Beverly Hills is boarding up. You hear word that, uh, you know, for the last month, there's been all kinds of people, strange, odd people staying in hotels that don't really look like they should be there. So, the world is just, there's just this vibe. Earlier today, the birds are going crazy now. <laughs> now, the, now the wind is going to blow this camera right off. Yes, world, I hear you. You're, the world is mad. Can you hear it? Hear it. So anytime I feel sorry for myself, I always think of, you know, the other people and they always in my mind are like you think you have it bad think about what we had to go through Constantly. remember remember two stories from the dead Shay Evans peace out good luck good luck on uh, November 3rd and uh, here's the little thing that's trying to talk whoever you vote for They really do anything. I don't even think the power's with them. I'll be political for a second. If we really want to change something, we need to change the fact that the Senate and the Congress need to only be allowed to do and serve eight-year terms. Not 50, 40. I mean, the generation gaps. So if the president can only serve eight, local government can only serve eight, it needs to change. People have to change it. People have to say, this is ridiculous. Now, it's really hard because we're just a bunch of regular poor people with no power. But we have to change. You hear that noise? The spirits are angry. See you later. Oh, there's just too much going on around here. You can't even find the button. It's so bright. All right, love you. Bye.